I don't know what you've asked God for. I'm not sure what you're looking for him to do. But tell your other neighbor, neighbor, it's already done. Woo! That we don't have to wait until the battle is over, but we can shout the victory right now. I need about 10 people to stand on their feet and give God praise because it's already done. Woo! Hallelujah. We thank God today that we trust him and it's already done. Clap your hands, all ye people, and shout with the voice of triumph. Oh, we stand in victory today. It's already done. Hallelujah. That's it. Someone's been praying for a long time, but it's already done. If he said it, he's going to do it. If he said it, he's going to bring it to pass. Do I have about 10 people in the sanctuary that will give God praise right in the middle of it? The middle there is tension. In the middle there is turmoil. But we can praise God in the middle of it because it's already done. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. And the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Is there a praise in the sanctuary this morning? Woo! Because it's already done. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. We will bless the Lord at all times as praises continue to be in our mouths. We bless the Lord Jesus who is good all the time and all the time he is good. We're certainly honored to be here today as we celebrate Jesus Christ and the victory that we have in him. We honor you for being here today to all of our officers and members and our visitors today for you are family today as you are here at FBC. Clap your hands for yourselves today for the Lord is doing something great in our lives. This morning's text, Acts chapter 28 verses 1 through 3, Paul's ministry on Malta. Now when they had escaped, they did found out that the island was called Malta. And the natives showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled a fire and made us all welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks, and lay them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. So when the natives saw the creature hanging on his hand, they said to one another, no doubt, this man is a murderer whom, though he has escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow him to live. But he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. However, they were expecting that he would swell up and suddenly fall down dead. But after they had looked upon him for a long time, and saw no harm come to him. They changed their minds and said that he was a God, lowercase g. In that region, there was an estate of the leading citizens of the island whose name was Publius, who received us and entertained us courteously for three days. And it happened that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever 
and dysentery. Paul went to him and prayed, and he laid hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, the rest of those on the island who had diseases also came and were healed. This is the reading of the Lord's word for the Lord's people. Thanks be unto God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you now for your anointing. We ask you now to move on behalf of your people. We thank you, God, for your purpose and power. And we ask you, Father, to allow your word to go forth with power and precision in the name of Jesus. Now, God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Our Lord, our strength, and our Redeemer, let the church of the living God say amen. amen. If I can tag the text this morning, our subject is shake it off. Amen. Come on and tell your neighbor, say neighbor, neighbor. just shake it, off. shake it off. So Acts chapter 28 is not only the last chapter in the book of Acts. But it is the last lap before the Apostle Paul crosses the finish line to a stronger trust in our Savior. In other words, beloved, Acts chapter 28 makes a prophetic pronouncement that we must be getting closer to what God has for us. Because after this chapter, the Apostle Paul is about to be released into his purpose and on the move. But before Paul is free to move and to heal others, God allows something to happen in Acts chapter 28 to hurt him. So the first thing that we see here is faith when it hurts. Before Paul is blessed to be released, he goes through some things. Many of us today can relate to this because some of us, just like Paul, we believe God is up to something and up to something good. But before he blesses us, we feel the burden at the same time. At times, if we're honest, we say, thank you, Jesus. And then we are hurting at the same time. Some of us sing the hymn, no, whatever my lot, thou hast caused me to say, it is well with my soul. Reminding ourselves that God is the greatest power and we shall not be defeated. But in the next moment, we are weeping as though we are not going to make it. But here in the text, God's prolific and proclaimed prophet, the Apostle Paul, has faith to believe even when it hurts. Something happens, beloved, when you hold on to your faith. I'm here today to increase your faith. Knowing that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. We, beloved, this morning must survive unexpected situations. As we sit in the tension of the text, as I submit to you my first point, brave believer. Now, the text calls these people barbarians. Now, you know you are getting close to what God has for you when you find yourselves in a strange place, making it on broken pieces. Here in the text, Malta is a place that is filled with people who are brutal and barbaric. Their conduct is rude and rough. And their conversations are heinous and harsh. If we're honest today, some of us may declare that our world must be the Malta. Some of us, if we're honest today, everywhere we go, we see barbarous types of people. It appears 
that no one in this world has the love of God anymore. It is as though people in this world has a heart for God, but is clogged with hatred. Here as we sit in the tension of the text, Paul was a shipwrecked survivor. It was the custom of the day to normally see those who survive shipwrecks as murderers. But God is reminding us here that they showed him kindness. In other words, God says that he will make your enemies <laughs> your footstool. Here in the text, beloved, these barbarians, meaning they were from an alien land and culture, a group of people believed to be inferior, uncivilized, and violent. One who speaks a different language. They are barbarians, but we are believers. Hmm. Barbarians speak the language of heathens, but we as believers speak the language of heaven. That we believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He declares, I know the plans that I have for you. Their plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. That God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. But if he said it, he's going to make it good. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. I'm here to encourage you today, beloved, that you cannot fall apart in this season. For God is up to something, and he's up to something good. But beloved, this morning, I asked a question of the text. Why did Paul throw sticks on the fire in the rain? Because Paul realizes that there are times in our lives where we're going through trials and tribulations, but we have to keep the fire burning even in the midst of inclement conditions. There are times, beloved, when we're going through the battles of life, but we have to continue to push on, continue to pray on, continue to praise on. I understand, beloved, there are days where we do not feel like rejoicing. There are days when we don't feel like saying amen. There are days when we do not feel like praying. But Paul says, keep the fire burning. Now, when we sit in the context of the text, fire is blazing. That means it burns fiercely and brightly. It has outstanding power, speed, heat, and intensity. I'm here to declare to you today, when you are dealing with fire, tell somebody, don't lose your focus. Yeah, believe it or not, beloved, there are some people that go through trials and tribulations, and it feels like the vipers of life try to latch onto you. What do we do when troubles just don't want to let us go? What do we do? We must hold on until the change comes. When discouragement will bite us and does not want to let us go. When depression will bite us and does not want to let us go. When disappointment will bite us and just does not want to let us go. When despair will bite us and does not want to let us go. When hard times will bite us and does not want to let us go. I have good news in hard times when the enemy comes in like a flood. God said, I will lift up a standard against it. Come on and tell your neighbor, say neighbor, shake it off. We understand, beloved, that we've seen the enemy attack 
in many areas of our lives. But one thing we need to do when the enemy holds on to us, we hold on to God. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Many of us, beloved, received the COVID-19 vaccinations. So when the infection tries to harm you, you have what it takes inside of you to prevent the infections from taking you out. There is a medicine that's on the inside of you called a spiritual vaccination. It is the word of God. See, the text said the barbarians called Paul a criminal. But one man's criminal is God's conqueror. But God's conqueror hath to shake. Come on and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, just shake it off. I've come to announce today that we are the private property of God. And violators must be prosecuted. We understand, beloved, this morning that the enemy may be the king of snakes, but he's met the king of kings. So I stopped by to let you know in my second point that we were beaten, but not beaten. <laughs> See, the bite was supposed to beat you, but God defied the directive. <laughs> See, when God has his way, he defies the directive. <laughs> What should have taken you out cannot because God has dominion. See, beloved, this morning, cancer should have killed you, but God defied the directive. The drug overdose should have wiped you out, but God defied the directive. Statistics say that you should have committed suicide by now, but God defied the directive. The car accident should have killed you, but God defied the directive. See, I stopped by to let you know that the decision was supposed to be disastrous, but God defied the directive. See, your job was supposed to be in jeopardy, but God defied the directive. See, crisis, calamity was supposed to take you out. But God defied the directive. I need you to tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, we were bitten, but not beaten. <laughs> See, I want to let you know today, the purpose of the fire is a symbol of God's divinity. As we sit in the spiritual context of fire, fire symbolizes birth. Fire symbolizes hope. And fire symbolizes resurrection. See, fire, according to the biblical context, represents God's presence and his guidance. So I'm here to let you know today that the fire is used for your benefit and for the enemy's defeat. See, we were bitten, but we will not be bitter. We were bitten, but we could not hit rock bottom. See, we were bitten, but we cannot back down. We were bitten, but we will not back off. I need you to tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, neighbor. just shake it off. See, this morning, beloved, we must shake it off. So that when we shake it off, we understand that we will not break in this season. That we are bitten, but we have a bounce back. There is something working on the inside of us. But greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. He is the one who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless. We have a spring on the inside of us called the Holy Spirit. 
So every time the enemy tries to get us down, here's my third point. We bounce right back up. Come on and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, just shake it off. So here, as we sit in the tension of the text, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God said, I've come that you may have a life and that more abundantly. As we sit in this last point, the bounce back, it means to return quickly, someone say quickly, to a normal condition after a difficult situation or event. Come on and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I have a bounce back. See, the enemy wants to whip you, but come on and tell your neighbor, I'm still winning. See, the enemy tried to devastate you, but tell your neighbor, I'm still destined. See, the enemy tried to frustrate you, but tell your neighbor, I am a force. See, the enemy tried to pain you, but tell your neighbor, I am phenomenal. The enemy tried to bury you, but tell your neighbor, I have a bounce back so here in this moment I need you to shake it off see God told me to let you know that in the last season the enemy tried to attack you and you may have some residue that tries to stick on you but tell your neighbor say neighbor I'm gonna shake it off See, I stopped by to let you know that God has sealed us until the day of his coming. That you are sealed with Holy Ghost fire and with promise. See, I stopped by to let you know that the seal is an identifying mark that's placed on a person, place, or thing. See, we as African Americans, we were slaves and branded with a seal to show who we belong to. But we are the people of Jesus Christ. And we are marked and sealed with his power. We are marked and sealed with his blood. So tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, just shake it off. See, I stopped by to let you know because we are sealed until the day of his coming. See, because we have the top on it, even when it's shaking, nothing can come out of it. See, I stopped by to let you know with the same hand of the enemy tried to kill, that's the same hand that will lay hands on the sick and they have to recover. It's the same hand that God told me to let you know that you went through trials and tribulations. But it's with that same hand that you will perform signs and wonders. Come on and tell your neighbor, say neighbor, I need you to raise your hand. See, every time you raise your hand, it's a sign and a signal that all things work together for the good. For those who are called according to his purpose. With this same hand, we may have been battered. But with this same hand, we are blessed and highly favored. With this same hand, we may be scared. But it's with this same hand that we will secure success. With this same hand, we were crushed on every side. But with this same hand, we're still a child of God. Do me a favor and say, neighbor, I need you to lift your hands. Lift your hands, all ye people, and shout with the voice of triumph. With this same hand, we may be aching today, but with this same hand, we will give God praise. May I let you know that we're holding on to God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal and hold on to God's unchanging hand. I need you to give God praise when the praises 
go up. The blessings must come down. Do me a favor and say, neighbor, just shake it off. For you have power. Dunamis power. But I need you to stand on your feet. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Is there anybody that will praise God in advance? Because God said to shake it off. Do me a favor and say, neighbor, may I have your hand? I understand that we're still in a pandemic. Just stretch your hands. For Father, I stretch my hands to thee. The only help I know that as you grab your neighbor, say, neighbor, it's a sign and a symbol that we are in God's hands. It's a sign and a symbol that God will handle it. Just shake it off. Come on and clap your hands for Jesus. Come on. Just shake it off. Just shake it off. Just shake it off. Come on. Somebody's healed and sealed. Just shake it off. Because the promises are still yes and amen. See, I stopped by to let you know to hold on to his hand. To build your hope on things eternal. And hold on to his hand. Clap your hands and bless Jesus. We are reminded in the three points today as we close that we are brave believers that we were bitten but not beaten that whoo, we have the bounce back everyone standing the doors of the church are open if you are out of church and out of Christ we would love for you to connect here at FBC. Join our family because we understand that there are issues, challenges, concerns, and crisis. But God said, just shake it off because you have power, you have purpose. And Dr. Hope, we have a promise. So when the enemy tries to attach life's issues, we just shake it off. And the heathen will see that we are in his hands. <laughs> that we have this blessed assurance. <laughs> that God is going to finish what he started in you. Woo. Just have faith. Hold on to God, for God will do exactly what he said. Once again, before we close, the doors of the church are open. If you are out of church or out of Christ and you would love to connect with us, we would love to connect with you. As we partner in prayer, we partner in purpose, we partner in God's plan, and we partner with praise. So we thank him today for his word that cannot return void, but it must accomplish what he sent it to do. Our victorious viewers, we thank you for meeting us today as we are just shaking it off. And we will hold on to God like never before, for a bounce back belongs to you. <laughs>